uh, the raccoon man from that one movie uh, printed on it. Chewbacca. Oh, Rick, they want you to say wubba lubba dub dub at the end. Screw that. We're not whores. Welcome back, everyone. Pour one out for the Choco Taco. This will be my full Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 4 video. There were a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them. Careful for spoilers from the episode. If you haven't seen it yet, we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through shot by shot, talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments as we go along. Starting with the episode title, Night Family, which is just a reference to the unconscious versions of themselves that took over because of the somnambulator that did things that they didn't want to do. But the whole joke here is that it's the same people, like it's the same family, it's just their unconscious minds who are in control when they're in that state. So like everything that they do in that state are things that the regular versions wanted to do subconsciously but just never actually did. Jerry's the clue for this because the night version of Jerry is almost the exact same as the day version, like there's no difference, they're equally as lame. The summer night person makes it seem like there may have been some other secret villain controlling Summer's body, but the joke here is that deep down inside Summer really does want to take over the planet eventually and take over the family in general. So hat tip to keep an eye on her in the future, like Rick is probably going to keep a closer watch on her in the future, but there have been previous episodes where they've shown her being like this, where she really enjoys being the ruler of a people. But the real joke here is the joke about Rick not wanting to do the dishes. Like Night Summer is the first one that snaps because the dishes are so bad and she just wants Rick to help out a little bit and the rest of the episode is basically showing how far he will go to avoid doing the dishes. Even at the end of the episode when the Knight family is willing to come to a compromise, Rick is unwilling to do so. He'd rather live like a slave than do the dishes. The episode is done as sort of like a horror episode, like it's a parody of horror movies like this. The actress Spencer Grammer who plays Summer said that it was her favorite episode because she loves these kinds of horror movies and it was a big Summer episode. One of the other big changes in this episode is that they start with a special text title. I don't think that they've ever done this in Rick and Morty before. It's taken from a real poem that T.S. Eliot actually wrote. Like even though it sounds kind of strange, it is a real poem. It says, when you're all alone in the middle of the night and you wake in a sweat in a hell of a fright, when you're all alone in the middle of the bed and you wake like someone hit you on the head, you've had a cream of a nightmare dream and you've got the hoo-hahs. Jerry also makes a hoo-hahs reference later, meaning that he also read T.S. Eliot like he's got a little bit of culture in him. The whole joke with best sheep counting app is that normally you would have somebody do that in their head, like just count sheep and you would do it silently while you were trying to sleep. They said that the whole idea of the somnambulator, the term somnambulate literally means to sleepwalk and that's kind of what the Knight family does in the episode, they're like the sleepwalking version of the family. Rick and Morty use it to get crazy abs, Beth learns it to play the trumpet, Summer learns Spanish, and the whole bit with Jerry just being super lame, only using it to be his own pen pal, but I think what they're trying to say here is that Jerry is his own best friend. Which also does work in their favor later, because Night Jerry winds up helping them. Pretty much throughout the entire episode, they use all kinds of horror movie tropes, like the way that they light the episode, the way it takes place mostly in the night, they use a bunch of jump scares like horror movies, they use all the creepy music you hear in horror movies. Even the end of the episode is done as sort of like a parody of horror movie endings, like a very downer dystopian type of ending. Rick specifically calls the night people their unconscious self, but the way I thought about it is that basically like everything that the night people wanted were the subconscious desires of the waking family. So like everything that the night family does are things that the regular family wanted to do but never actually did. He's got a new word for plebes calling them zebes, like somehow that's meant to be worse than being a plebe. The whole joke with Summer's work around here to get him to let them use it is just more her taking advantage of his need to always have the coolest thing and be the center of attention. They mentioned Postmates, I wonder if it was meant to be an integration, like did Postmates actually pay them money because it seemed like a weird reference to make. Sometimes brands will do that, but like for instance they make a lot of Marvel jokes, Marvel does not pay them money to make fun of Marvel. They set it the whole bit with the calendar because there are a couple big time jumps in the episode, like it's been almost a couple weeks that they've been using it the first time, then later a bunch more time goes by, then at the end of the episode there's another big time jump, which they pay off with the Choco Tacos, which is somehow like the worst possible thing that could have happened to them. Like that's the thing that they're all pissed off about, how could they get rid of Choco Tacos? That's actually taken from real life, like in real life they stop selling Choco Tacos. When Morty comes in to show them his abs, they play it for a big joke like he's getting ready to whip his junk out because he says, ah, look what I got here as he unzips the bag, but they don't show you the bag till they zoom out. Like, wait a minute, what is he unzipping here? What's going on? He and Rick start a podcast called Fabsolutely Abulous, which is just a joke about all the ridiculous podcasts that people start and then quit. Like, they only have the podcast for like a really short period before the Knight family takes over and that's the end of the podcast. Apparently it turns into a super big deal though in the short time that they had it running. 
Like they joke about having Nancy Pelosi as one of the guests on it. Like that's how big their podcast is getting which they also pay off later in the episode when they actually show you them podcasting with a bunch of quick references to each other. And it's meant to be a joke about the way the podcast hosts talk to each other on podcasts. They have them do that funny commercial break because they're sponsored by the Boxer Lobster Company, which is a fake business. He also makes the Chewbacca Star Wars joke and the Wubba Lubba Dub Dub joke. Also joking about selling out. Like the whole joke is that Rick and Morty do all kinds of ad placements. Like there are all kinds of ads that they post on their YouTube channel. So in real life, Rick and Morty sell out all the time, but Rick is always complaining in episodes about how he doesn't want to sell out. The under the pillow address on Jerry's letters was a reference to them leaving each other notes under the pillow. That's how Day Jerry asked Night Jerry for help later in the episode. And it also turns out that he's a huge Tori Amos fan. Morty makes a Flapjacks pancake reference to his abs. He seems weirdly obsessed with his body during this episode. And I think one of the other jokes here about Day and Night Jerry being so lame is that they're the ones that kind of set this off too. Like Night Jerry gives Day Jerry the note from Night Summer to kind of start everything. Like, could you please wash your dishes a little bit before you put them in the sink? And that starts Rick's whole war with the Knight family. Like, how dare they ask me to wash the dishes? I refuse to wash the dishes. We get to go back into Rick's room for, I think, the third time on the series. We haven't actually been in here that many times. He's got a very elaborate rooster crow device that he's using as an alarm clock that hatches and grows a rooster to maturity where it gives off his rooster cry, waking him up. Then it destroys it, cleaning the mess, and repeats it the next day. So it's just a joke about all the weird links that Rick will go to to do things that he could normally do much easier if he made some compromises. Like the whole episode is a joke about how Rick never wants to compromise. Because like his rooster device here actually has a digital alarm clock on it and already kind of makes a sound. Like he doesn't actually need it to create a rooster to do what he wants it to do. Zoom and enhance all over his walls. He's got a bunch of Easter eggs and references for previous seasons. There's a picture of Aberdolf Linkler. This is a Zygerian from the M. Night episode. This is Dr. Xenon Bloom from the Anatomy Park episode. There's a Meeseeks. There's plans for his original spaceship made from common household items. Over on the left here, this seems kind of like one of the Cronenberg people from Cronenberg World. He's also got schematics for his classic laser gun that we saw in Me Seeks and Destroy. There's schematics for a Me Seeks box and there's plans for a couple other devices in a fuel cell. You also notice that he's got a giant box of old school floppy disks on the ground, like the old school 3x5 disks that you would have had if you had a PC back in the 90s or early 2000s. You also notice when he comes into the kitchen and notices there are no dishes, it gets pissed off. He uses the word cock because he just used one in his alarm clock. They have that whole joke with a side quest in the Forbidden Zone, which I think is meant to be a parody of the 80s sci-fi movie Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. They also use it to make a Marmaduke joke. Marmaduke is a cartoon character. And it's meant to be a parody of a bunch of different things, like a giant Avengers Infinity War type of scene where Thor goes to make Stormbreaker on the Dwarven homeworld and Rick goes to make a version of dinner plates that can't be destroyed like the vibranium or adamantium version of plates. They even have an over-the-top joke about how they're 110% indestructible and even bother to stamp it into the plates themselves. There are a couple details like this in the episode where it kind of makes me think that it points the episode is taking place either in a simulation or inside someone's head because why would Rick stamp a plate 110% indestructible? If he's all about being accurate, technically 100% would be the most indestructible you could possibly get. And like at the end of the episode with the car chase, they have the Adderall truck, the over-the-top car crash with the gasoline factory, the dynamite factory, the dry leaf storage facility. And when they're finally driving away, like they've escaped and they're trying to make it to the airport, the road sign just says an airport, like it's super vague. And that's usually something you would see if it were a dream or if it were happening in some fake reality. You could always theorize that this episode featured a family that wasn't like the main family. There have been theories like that in the past, like just based on the way that they look or the things that they do. Like, oh, this could be about an alternate version of the family from a different reality. Or it could just be that the events of the episode didn't actually happen. And that's why some of the references were so vague. Like, what's the backstory with Rick and this other guy making him the dinner plates that are indestructible? Like, they have this whole backstory. He claims that he owes him his life. What is that story? They'll probably never pay that off either. Then they go full horror genre again when he wakes up and the Knight family is attacking him while he's strapped down, forcing him to eat the leftover food. Because the whole episode is a joke about how far people will go to avoid doing the dishes, if you live in a house with like really young kids that refuse to do dishes, you could probably show them this scene and it might scare them into actually doing the dishes. Even though the plot of the episode, some of the moments are kind of ridiculous, the animation, like the way that they parodied everything, is actually on point. Then they set up the whole bit with Knight Summer being the one to rule over the family. What might be happening here, because normally you would expect any version of Rick to try and be the dominant one, 
is that because the Knight family is like the unconscious subconscious version of the Dave family, maybe subconsciously Rick really does want to give up control and just be part of the family and have fun with the rest of them. So when that part of him takes over, he's more like that. He's more submissive. And like I said, the joke with Summer being that she really does secretly want to take over the world and that just kind of comes to the surface during the night version of her. When Summer makes the Terry Gilliam reference, talking about the sleep deprivation suit that Rick makes for her, specifically it's a time bandits reference. In that movie, the characters all wear like really similarly weird looking outfits. Also love the joke about the Mountain Dew in the Day Quill that he says that kids in Southern Europe call Dew Quill. Like that sounds so crazy that it could actually be a thing, but if you do actually live in Southern Europe and you know people that actually do that, let me know in the comments. You would be surprised at the crazy stuff the kids will do to try and have a good time. Also, this might be a bit of a Simpsons joke. Like they make a joke about Mountain Dew being gross. They did that on The Simpsons. It's one of my favorite Simpsons jokes ever. Why do you have to wash that awful taste out of my mouth? Mountain Dew or crab juice? Blech! Oh, jeez. I'll take a crab juice. That scene is taken from the New York City episode that was pulled because this was taking place at the World Trade Center. They pulled the episode from syndication after 9-11. Then when Summer reacts to the Knight family, they have this big horror movie Easter egg with the way she reacts, like the camera movement zooming in on her here. They actually use this on The Simpsons too. You can see The Simpsons did it before. But really in both cases, they're meant to be parodies of classic horror movies with reaction shots. They set up the whole joke with the Knight family's grand plan to take over and rule the day, but secretly what they actually want to do is do all the things that the regular family wanted to do, but never actually took the time to do, which is basically just go on vacations and have fun together. Like that's their whole thing. That's all they want to do. They just want to go out and have a good time. And this is where the episode gets pretty real, like pretty personal, because most people in real life do things this way. Like even me, I want to go on all these fun vacations, but how would I get any work done so I don't go on vacations? And it's the same lesson at the end of the episode where like the Knight family runs out of money because they spent all their time having fun and not doing any of the busy work, the boring stuff that the Day family normally does. They're meant to be all the regular versions of the family's unconscious desires completely freed. Like what would you do if there were no limits, if you could do anything you wanted to do? They reference the Shonies again and then they pull the same old timey reaction shot parody with Rick when he's reacting to Night Summer revealing herself. And I think what's actually going on here is what's happening later in the episode. Like they have the joke during the car chase with people bouncing back and forth between the night and the day versions as they get knocked out and then brought back to consciousness. I think what happened here is the idea is that Summer took off the sleep deprivation device and because she'd been so sleep deprived, she just passed out immediately and we're just watching it happen before our eyes and that's why Night Summer is able to take over so quickly. Like later in the episode, you see one of the family members get knocked out and immediately the night version takes over until they get woken up. And also when Night Summer says to Rick, your opinion means very little to me, that's something that Rick has repeated to Summer in previous seasons many times. Sorry, Summer, your opinion means very little to me. Sorry, Rick, but your opinion means very little to me. I'm not sure what all the robot appliances are meant to be parodies of outside of the Transformers or Cylons. Some of you think that this guy looks kind of like the robot from the Black Hole movie. They have their next time jump and it's been a little bit over a month since the last one. And at least at this point, the whole joke is that they're just torturing the Day family. Like they're just making them do all this menial labor. Like, wouldn't you be doing cooler stuff? There's all this advanced technology. Why does everything seem so old timey in this living room? The joke about the movies is that they're making Beth burn all the movies with the word day in the title, like Independence Day, Groundhog Day, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And that's why she saves the Talladega Nights movie because it has night in the title. This is where the episode starts to get really ridiculous, like really over the top. So you start to wonder like, wait a minute, is this actually really happening or is somebody just imagining this? They bring Gene back to clown on him a couple of times. He's kind of like the family's punching bag. Pretty much every episode he's in, something terrible winds up happening to him. When the car chase is happening, you notice they pass a U tow truck on the highway, but the mascot is literally a talking tow. The bit with her falling into the empty boxes is also a trope in a lot of series. Like it's been used so many times. The Simpsons have done it a bunch of times. The weird joke about the cop shooting everyone up, I think is meant to be like a call out on bad cops in real life for the past few years, but it did feel kind of weird the way they put it in the episode. And just the whole car chase in general is meant to be a parody of horror movie car chases. I did think it was funny the way that they highlighted Jerry's kink here, like he gets hard while she's choking him and even Night Beth gets a little disgusted with him like, ugh. The shot of Rick jumping between cars with the shotgun also feels like a direct movie parody. Like this is meant to be a direct scene taken from some other movie, but I'm not sure which one it is. So if you think you know, write it below in the comments. And then they pay off the bit about Rick doing anything, literally anything, going to any length to avoid doing the dishes, even submitting to the Knight family. 
Like I said, the dystopian ending of the episode with the special credits is also a parody of horror movies that have similar downer endings like this, but the actual credits are real credits. Like, this is all the production staff that actually worked on the episode. And all the scenes are just the Knight family doing all the things that unconsciously the Waking family wanted to do, but never took the time to do. Like they go to Bed Bath & Beyond, they go to what seems like Hawaii on vacation, they watch the Night at the Museum movie together, they took a vacation to Japan it seems like, they went to Paris, Knight Beth became a virtuoso trombone player. And the whole joke with the mug is that it's just the family showing genuine admiration for each other like a loving family would in a way that you would expect the regular family would have a really, really hard time doing. Like Rick would never do something like that unless something really went wrong. He actually does care about the family. They joke about it at the end of episode one this season, but he just refuses to admit it. In the actual post credit scene, they pay off the joke with everything getting repossessed because they spent all the family's money. They did all the things the regular family wanted to do, but didn't because they had to spend all their time earning money, having jobs, doing the stuff that you would normally have to do to just have a life. Love Knight Rick's solution, like he pulls the gun out as if he's trying to tell them that, oh, I have a solution here, we'll just all shoot ourselves and that'll fix everything. But actually just destroying the somnambulator, paying off the time jump joke with the Choco Tacos. Like of all the possible things that could have happened, them spending all the family's money, them destroying the house, them losing Choco Tacos is somehow way worse. So everyone pour one out for Choco Tacos. I'm sure at some point in the future, they'll bring a version of those back. I'm talking about in real life, but maybe in Rick and Morty, like in a future episode or future season when they bring them back, maybe Rick will talk about Choco Tacos. If you spotted any other Easter eggs and references in the episode that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments in my full episode five video we will post next week after they release it. Everyone click here for my Full House of the Dragon episode 7 video and click here for all my Rick and Morty episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.